Hello, today we're going to be going over creating an Azure AD DS for WVD purposes. Right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and create the virtual network that we're going to be using. And it's best to do this beforehand because what happens is, is when you deploy Azure AD DS, if you don't have anything deployed, it will want to, I mean, even if you have something deployed, it will want to go ahead and create those for you. And what you'll have is some names and uh, automated uh, creation. It's not exactly ideal, especially if you want to follow a typical naming convention in your environment. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the virtual network now. And we'll go ahead and name this our, you know, basically our WVD virtual network. Uh, we're only going to really be deploying WVD related things in here uh, for this demo. Go ahead and uh, define the IP address space. So um, especially if you already have a VNet up and running with the session hosts and you're kind of doing this retroactively to present a, a domain to them, we'll want to make sure that it doesn't conflict with any other VNets that we want to appear to. If you want to connect a, a VNet to a VNet, you cannot have them sharing the obvious, obviously sharing the same address range. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and here, throw a random one in here. Uh, I'm going to make it to slash 24. We don't really need 16 right now. Um, although we could do a, uh, a 16, but um, one thing you can actually do is specify different ranges. So I'm actually going to create two different ranges, one for my main subnet and one for the WVD um, subnet um, or the Azure AD DS subnet, I should say. So when I go down here to make the subnet, I'll make this my main. So I guess a hosts subnet. And I'm going to give it the range of the 5550 that we just made over there. Add, and then we'll make another subnet. Um, I like to refer to um, Azure ADDS as AZ ADDS. Uh, it's entirely up to you. But if you ever see me mention that, that's what that's what's kind of going on. So let's make a subnet specifically for that. Um, and you will need to because you cannot place anything besides the endpoints inside this subnet. So there we go. I have two subnets that are completely different. Uh, I made this a slash 24. You don't have to. You can make it a slash 12, uh, 27, I believe. As long as it's enough to hold the endpoints, you're pretty much good to go. And those design considerations can be seen in the Microsoft documentation if you'd like. But I usually use a slash 27 just because that tends to work. And I believe it was minimum at one point, um, but it could have changed by now. Old habits is die hard, I suppose. So we're going to go ahead and go to this resource. We now have this uh, virtual network up and running. So now that we have our VNet created, I'm going to go ahead and move on to creating the Azure domain services. And I can just type domain services into the search bar here to pull it up and click create. First off, we're going to validate that this is the correct subscription and the resource group. Moving down, we have our domain name here. It's gone ahead and populated the Azure AD tenants domain that we're going to be replicating. And as you can see, it's just my humorous little domain I throw in for my lab. Um, but we'll go ahead and implement best practice, which is going to be implementing a subdomain that is entirely unique so it doesn't interfere with anything you may already have. Uh, this subdomain can be pretty much anything as long as it kind of conforms to the subdomain rules. You can go ahead and click here for more information on um, this subject, but we're going to go ahead and create a subdomain that's unique and name it WVD. Now you don't have to worry about this um, being totally unique. Your users are going to still have their typical UPN of whatever you had before. So they're going to log in with their same name. They don't have to do much change to the users themselves because those will be synced and the prefixes will be there. You don't have to worry about that. This is just for the domain that's going to be in Azure. So when you join, you know, uh, devices and um, VMs to it, they're going to have this name, but you don't really have to worry too much about that. It's a, it's a one-way sync and the users keep their user principal name. So um, this is entirely fine customizing this. And in fact, like I said, it's best practice. So we're going to go ahead and create this as a WVD dot, uh, the domain name that we have. Next, I'm going to go ahead and specify the region and I'm over uh, in the happy Northwest. So I'm going to select US West 2. 
and we're going to go ahead with standard. For the vast majority of people, standard is what you want to go for. Um, and if you're large enough and you know who you are, you're going to want to implement enterprise or higher. Um, but again, you have the option to look, see, and determine for yourself what SKU you want to go with. In the force type, vast majority of cases, you want to go with user. Um, again, you have the option to click here to learn more. Moving on to networking, we're gonna go ahead and specify the VNets we created earlier. And this is why I create VNets uh, ahead of time and specify them because right off the bat, if you're not really paying attention, you're going next, 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 it's gonna create an entirely new VNet, an entirely new subnet with these names. And if you don't like these names, you're kind of stuck with them. <laughs> They're not going anywhere. Uh, so you really wanna make sure that you uh, are kind of paying attention during the setup phase. So. Uh, because I'm awake and have my coffee, I'm going to go ahead and specify the VNet I created earlier. And we're going to go ahead and specify the VNet I made specially for Azure ADDS. And if you don't have one, you can go ahead and you know, manage and create one right here. But we'll definitely want to make sure that's a separate VNet. We cannot deploy anything into that besides what Azure AD domain services is going to put in there, which is the little, these little endpoints. So go ahead and specify these here. And moving on, and I should come back and say that we can deploy Azure ADDS into an entirely new VNet. It's entirely possible. You just want to make sure that when you do so, you peer the VNets so that uh, anything in one VNet can essentially eventually resolve against the domain in another VNet, which is uh, kind of what we're doing here. So for the administrative aspect of this, this is going to create an AD group called AAD DC administrators. And in this group is going to be basically people with more or less domain admin privileges, although they're not technically domain admins. And that's a very important distinction for Azure ADDS. You're not a domain admin, but you have pretty much most of the rights you need for everything you need to do. So these are going to be the users. We can come here and manage the groups and specify the admins there. Um, you'll obviously want to add yourself if you're the admin for the environment, um, but you'll have to specify that here. Um, and the rest of these, uh, there's more kind of security settings for notifications. For synchronization type, generally we just specify all. And unless you have a large Azure AD tenant with lots of users that are not going to be using this service, uh, WVD, um, and you want to scope for just those users, in which case you would go here and you'd select the groups. And for me, I have a group called WVD users and I could specify this. And because we don't need everybody else to use WPD, we just sync over the users we need to this uh, you know, managed domain. This is where we can do it. Um, so go ahead and uh, select here. And these are the guys that are gonna come over and get synced. Otherwise, we're only gonna select all. Um, the caveat here is that if you need to go um, from all, if you select it all and you need to go scoped, that's not possible. You can only go from scoped to all. You cannot um, go back. So. Uh, if you are very apprehensive, you can do scoped and do your POC. You just have to remember that you eventually have to do all if those users are going to be um, syncing against the service. This is just another group um, you're going to have to be knowledgeable of. Once this is all set up, we can kind of let it verify here. The verification takes a minute or two, but once that's done, we'll go ahead and click create. And it's going to go ahead and let us know that all of these things are things we cannot change. Once we do it, it's set in stone you're gonna to have to live with it or recreate this. And it's not the most fun to recreate um, because as you can see, we'll wait for it to, to verify, but this entire deployment generally takes about half an hour to an hour. Um, it's quite a long process. So you can go grab a cup of tea, uh, sit back and wait. And after it's deployed, it's gonna take another half hour, maybe longer, depending on how large your uh, directory is to finally sync up and go all lights green and we're ready to go. Um, once it's done, we'll come back and I'll show you how to finalize the deployment. All right, so our deployment is now complete and we can go ahead and go to the resource. Once it's fully complete, you will see a green check mark right here. Until then, it'll be syncing or doing other actions and you should wait a bit longer before finally finishing. As you can see, uh, it looks like they've added a, an alert if you don't have the network configuration set up correctly. You go over here, it may actually give you the option to run and figure out what's going on, but we know what's going on right off the bat. Uh, we'll want to implement this so that the virtual network is pointing to it correctly. So now that it's deployed, 
we'll go over to properties. And as you can see, it will show the IP addresses that the domain endpoints are at. These are essentially the network interfaces that uh, will be linked through the actual domain controllers in the background. If we refer back over to our diagram here, these are the IP addresses for these endpoints. And in the background, there are various things. I think there are more than two servers, but um, there's a load balancer and whatnot, but you don't really have to worry about any of this. Uh, you may see a bit of it if you peek behind the curtains, but for the most part, this is just uh, kind of in the background. The only thing we really care about are these two endpoints right here, which correspond to this. So take note of this. It is in the 56.4 and 56.5 for my case. Yours will be different, so don't follow too blindly here. Let's go over to our virtual network. And in here, we'll actually see that they've already been deployed. Um, and since this virtual network is fresh, there's nothing else in here. Otherwise, you may see some session hosts and whatnot. But right now, since this is the only thing that's been deployed to it, this is what it is here. So we'll want to configure the DNS settings for this virtual network. To do so, we'll go to the DNS servers and click Custom. And we'll have to provide the endpoint IPs right here. This essentially uh, sets the uh, DHCP option or kind of setting for the DNS server. So when VMs are booting up and they ask the network, hey, what's the DNS server? This is what is going to be provided to them. And I say this because any VMs that are currently powered on, they're not going to be dynamically changed um, right off the bat. It's best to restart the machines and that's why you get this error at the top or um, notification to restart the machines because that is the best way in order for them to kind of come back online and grab those new settings appropriately. Um, all this is kind of more or less a black box on the back end. Um, so you wanna definitely uh, take a step back and take an approach that is more uh, saying, you know, I want this to happen. And then Azure kind of sets up these VMs and um, gets them all ready for you in this manner. So. We want to set our settings here and just kind of um, back away from it. But but yes, you will have to restart any VMs to make these changes. Go on ahead and select the save. And as you can see, we now have two new DNS server IPs for this virtual network. This will apply to everything in the virtual network. So if you have different subnets, they are all going to get this single DNS server as their listing. If you have on-premise servers um, or you're managing your own uh, domain controllers, this is also where you would dictate that. But because we're doing Azure DDS, we want to dictate that uh, to be the IP addresses that we're given there. We don't really have control over what IP addresses it will get. It'll just get it some in those range, uh, but generally it does do the four and the five from the range as I've seen, um, but it can be um, different, but it won't change after it's fully configured and done. These IPs are going to stay static. They're going to stay these ones specifically. Now that that's done, um, we're pretty much good to go. Our network is now fully configured. Now, if I go back to my resource, we can actually see that that error is now gone and we are pretty much up and ready and good to go. Now, Please keep in mind that after you've deployed this, if you are cloud only, you will have to reset passwords for all users that are going to use this. That's including yourself. So you will have to go up and reset your password in Azure AD uh, for your user in order for it to sync. Otherwise, if you try to connect right now, it's going to fail. And if you try to connect too many times, by default, the password policy on this domain that's created is going to lock you out for 30 minutes. Um, and that's the default as of right now. It could have changed, but most likely it's going to stay the same. It's a 30 minute lockout. And I believe it's five times. Um, you can edit these things. There is uh, documentation in Microsoft for that. I recommend um, not really to bother too much with it, just to make sure that you reset your password right now. And um, I believe, depending on your password policy, I believe you can just do the same password um, or take the time to create a new one. Once it's done, then attempt to log in. Otherwise, it's going to kick you out. And the best way to kind of get around this if you're impatient and you don't want to wait for half an hour is to create a new user and put them in the group for um, the uh, domain admin group. Um, not domain admin, but you know, the equivalent thereof. 
uh, right here. And then you can create a brand new user and because it's a brand new user and you're currently syncing all users, or if you put that user in a group that is synced, it will get those permissions and you can kind of um, work around that. But uh, right off the bat, I highly recommend you just reset the password so you don't have to deal with that lockout and that annoyance. But we can come here and um, see we have the scope. We can switch it to, switch it to all if we want. Um, but right here, this is the scope. You can check the health. Everything's kind of working good and ready to go. So um, once that's done, that's pretty much all there is to it. This domain is now managed uh, by Microsoft. You don't have to worry about the updates for the domain controllers. You don't have to worry about uh, making sure that those domain controllers are correctly created and there's uh, certain permissions, etc. It's much more hands-off and you're just presented something that um, you're essentially just getting the benefits of. So that is our setup for the domain and virtual network aspect of it. Um, as long as these things are set up correctly, we'll be ready and good to go.